Hello and welcome back to Elden Ring The Ultimate Guide. Today it is part 34, which is the study hall. Now, we're already at the study hall and you might be wondering, wait, why are we doing this study hall just now, despite the fact that surely we should be doing the inverted study hall? Well, actually, earlier in the guide, in case you this is the first uh, one you're, you're watching, we ignored coming to the study hall initially because actually there's barely anything in it, so it wasn't even worth doing. And the reason why it's not worth doing is there is a particularly irritating NPC in this area that, frankly, when you do it, when you first come to this area, massive ungodly pain in the ass. And this is the NPC here. But because we're a much higher level, they do significantly less damage to us, and thus it is a much, much smaller pain in the ass. So, given that there's basically nothing in this area, we just waited until we have to do the inverted study hall, and we're just going to do the normal version and the inverted version all in one go. So, this yeah. is the, the NPC. This is Miriam. And as you can see, Miriam has a lot of health and is very irritating because they keep warping away as soon as you get close to them. And to the point where even wild strikes probably wouldn't even really help. I mean, it might, but frankly, it just seems to warp away in its own volition. Yeah, I don't think Wild Strikes would help. So you kind of just have to go through the motions, picking up the Kerry and Glintstone staff there. But uh, yeah, right up at the top here, it's a big circular sort of awning area. And you have to chase Miriam around the awning. Uh, particularly if you're doing this uh, when you first are shown this area gigantic pain in the ass because Miriam just keeps peppering new spells from a million miles away and we cannot be arsed with that. So instead we're just going to like trade hits in with the bow into Miriam because like Miriam doesn't do that much damage so we can just like take the damage Miriam's hitting us with and just like fire arrows through it um, and it's honestly it's just much much preferred. Now if somebody has a method for immediately killing Miriam then by all means, stick it in the comments. I've looked, I tried, I was like, Miriam Cheese Method, I just, nothing existed, you just have to do this, apparently. So if somebody knows a way of just, bang, one, one shot in Miriam, that'd be great. But otherwise, uh -huh. we're just uh, picking up the last of the items here and then heading on to the rafters. Yeah, I was just about to say, after defeating Miriam, um, I think there's only two more items in this entire area to pick up. In the normal version, yeah. and we already have the stronger version of one of them, I'm pretty sure. Unless I'm mistaken, and what we get here actually is the Cerulean Seed Talisman. Uh, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, yeah, so it is. Um, the Cerulean Seed Talisman is actually not bad at all, especially if you're doing something like um, a caster build. Because what the Cerulean Seed does is it has a very similar effect to the Crimson Seed in that it makes your blue flask give you more FP back on use. We're returning to the entrance now. We're going to place the Carrion inverted statue on that altar in front of us. You get a little cutscene and then everything goes topsy-turvy. But yeah, if you're using a lot of FP, so if you're using Ashes of War a lot, you Spirit Summon a lot, and you want to get more value out of your blue flasks, the Cerulean Seed Talisman isn't a bad pickup. It's actually worth keeping. Okay, so now we're going to place the statue on this little altar here. I've just skipped the cutscene, but yeah, now, effectively, this has inverted the whole tower that we're in, and now we're starting from the top? I, or, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what you'd even call this. We're starting from the bottom, but now we're working our way down, but technically we're at the top. Yeah, this bit is very annoying, because Miriam shows up again. However, there is... There is a cheese method to beating this Miriam, and I do not understand how this works, but it does work. So, just quickly, as much as this method does work, it it's kind of temperamental. Sometimes Miriam won't just die from doing this and will somehow come along the edge of where you walked and then start trying to shoot you in this little alcove. If that happens, just, I, I mean, fight Miriam if you want, use wild strikes, yada yada. Or you can just kill yourself and then come back here and try it again. I've had to do it in this particular character, but other characters it's worked the first time, so I don't know. Sure, you can go fight Miriam if you want. Uh, I don't think this Miriam teleports, or if it does, it only teleports once or twice. But you can just 
wait in this corner for a while and Miriam will just die. Yeah, you gotta stand over here Blair witching it until Miriam throws herself into the void. It's not yeah, a great I... method, but somehow it does work. I genuinely, I can't, I, I really do not understand what the fuck the mechanics are here. If somebody has a free camera and can check, that'd be cool. But Miriam is about to just die for some reason. And I put Blood Flame goes. Blade on. Uh, so that me putting Blood Flame Blade on was me just accepting that I had to fight Miriam. But uh, apparently you don't have to fight Miriam. You can just wait. And then you never need to fight that fucking thing. Because pain in the arse. Now I will say, um, all you get from that is lucidity. Um, which I think your sleep build up on use. So it basically has no function in PvE. Uh, jumping down from here onto the bottom of the chandeliers now. And now we're doing the rafters upside down. But yeah, if you did really just want to skip Miriam, in the top uh, rotunda section, if you run around to the right-hand side and tuck right into the corner and then save quit, when you drop down to where Miriam would have been in that big inverted archway, uh, Miriam just doesn't spawn. So if you can't be bothered dealing with Miriam at all, then uh, that is the way to avoid it completely. And also, I guess, if you did want to fight Miriam, Wild Strikes plus Blood Flame Blade is the way to fight Miriam, as with all NPCs. So as long as very Miriam ain't teleporting, uh, Miriam ain't getting out of that fucking attack pattern, I'll tell you that. But, yeah, that is true. But this is pretty much it for the inverted... Uh, study hall is kind. Of, it's kind of there's nothing really to it. Um, there's nothing to it the normal way, and there's kind of nothing to it the correct way. But the thing is, is we have to do the study hall in order to get to deep root depths. So heading along the big, uh, the great bridge, I suppose, and lo and behold, one of these motherfuckers shows up. But um, yeah, our build is incredibly geared towards killing this thing at this point. Now, we have some sleep pots. We've shown you this previously. So, make sure you uh, craft some sleep pots before coming here. But otherwise, Wild Strikes plus Blood Flame Blade will absolutely fucking melt this thing. Just keep going. Done. That's how you kill this thing. And I really wish that we... I, I mean, I suppose we actually could have done that. Uh, I can't fuck against the um, against the Godskin Noble and Volcano Manor as well. We could have done that, I guess. Yeah, I suppose we could have. Um, speaking of, the Godskin Noble and Volcano Manor, I believe, drops the Noble Presence, Ash of War. Um, or Incantation, rather. And wearing the armor set that we just got from killing this Godskin Noble boosts the strength of Noble Presence. So we just got the uh, the Deathmark Great Rune and Stargazer's Heirloom. Now, if you wanted to wait to do uh, Gold Masks and Corrin's Quest, this would allow you to not have to use a a Larval tier in order to respec uh, to get the 38 Intelligence. You can just stack a whole bunch of Intelligence increasing effects. And the Stargazer Heirloom is one of them that is uh, kind of required to do that. Yeah, among many other things. But we walked back to uh, Deep Root Depths, but the grace at the very top, which is where you would exit from the section of the game where you'd get the Frenzied Flame ending. Yes. And we've headed down the uh, right-hand side as you're looking into Deep Root Depths from the top and jumped down onto a platform with some ants, killed a big ant, got a big rune and a rune arc, and now we're on the branches. And this is quite precarious platforming, so you might not want to do this on Torrent because he's kind of unwieldy. Now, you don't have to start Deep Root Depths from this point. Um, if you didn't do the Frenzy Flame, you could also get to Deep Root Depths from Seofra Aqueduct after defeating the dual Gargoyles boss fight. And we do go to that area immediately after... So, basically, the bottom of this area is where that leads to. So, if you don't have the Frenzy Flame part, just hold on a little bit. And I'm sure we will get to a point that you do recognise. Uh, and then you can just start from there if you can't be arsed doing this bit. 
Yeah, there's not a great deal up here. It's just important for guide purposes that we show you what these items are. I know we haven't talked about them very much, but as I said, nothing up here has any major significance. It's not nah. like it's something that we rely on for the build to work in later areas. Particularly because we picked up our Smith and Stone 6 and we're not even using Smith and Stone 6s anymore for the main upgrades on our weapons. It's 7 and 8s at this stage, so it's kind of nothing you really need to worry about too much. So you could just completely skip this entire route section, really, if you wanted to. Um, but fuck it, obviously we're going to show you uh, how to do deep root depths, quote unquote, properly. So this is part of it. I guess less than properly, it's more fully. Yeah. Showing you where everything is and what everything is, importantly. So there's another golden one, eight. It's been a bunch of them. Um, just make sure you're jumping on exactly the same branches as we are jumping on and, uh, like, you know, exactly how we're doing it. So, you know, dropping off into that one. We can drop off onto this one. And now there's an item here, but then there's some more ants. Uh, we are very geared towards killing these fucking ants. So that's pretty good. The build is good at it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, arguably at this stage in the game, we are, since we're picking up Smithing Stone 6s, it's kind of your indication that our gear is now, like, outstrengthing this area, if you see what I mean. Like, yes, we have outpowered it at this point. Uh, I suppose technically this area could be said to be scaled after, I mean, it would should be scaled after Rani's quest, but remember, we can actually start and finish Rani's quest quite a lot earlier than what we did so you could have started and you, you could have got to you could have done deep root depths by pff, jesus like before altus technically pretty much immediately after radon yeah because radon i mean radon's kind of the key to getting to this area so so now we're just warping to the Great Waterfall Crest, which is um, which is where you would have been ha had you came from defeating the Twin Gargoyles. So this could be seen to be your second starting point, theoretically, depending on where you're starting from. So immediately, then, there is a uh, Air Tree Avatar. We're just doing this the normal way. Um, just using the, the rolling technique. You should be rolling into this thing. It's, it's hard to get past the habit of, um, what do you call it, like rolling away. But yeah, just roll into this thing's attacks um, and try to actually roll the attacks and not get hit by them. Don't know why I'm getting so greedy here. <laughs> I think yeah, that's, uh, you, you've almost got a false sense of security because we're so much stronger than things in this area at this point. Yeah, I think that may be it, actually. But we get the Staff of the Avatar for that. We're picking up some Ghost Blood War 4, which is definitely lower level than where than what we have uh we get the golden land ash of war and we are not fighting those two um like rock-headed ants or whatever the fuck you want to call them they are one of them is bad enough two of them that don't drop anything we are not fighting them so we're just going back to the grace to reset that position yeah just a waste of time and energy really you i think you probably should have used flaming strike on that uh, uh Urtree Avatar, because I think we did this in testing, and I'm pretty sure you two-shot it. No, um, um, but I, I definitely did... You, so I did two-shot, like, one of them at one point. Yeah, but I think it was a weaker one. Oh, right, okay. But anyway, going across the branches, we're going to head into this little cave. Uh, I do agree, though, you should be using Flame and Strike against the Urtree Avatars. Um... As much as I really should be extremely thorough with the guide, sometimes it's just, like, easier. And I'm like, oh, I can't be arsed changing the Ash of War, but I can just tell you that Flaming Strike would be better. But that's bad practice, I'm, I'm aware. Now, I'm speeding this bit up with the ants. It's pretty self-explanatory how to kill a bunch of ants, but there's so many ants that it was extremely boring to watch me fight through, so just kill the ants. I don't, I don't think you should have any issues with just jumping L1 these ants and heal when you have to. Yeah. On the topic of using different Ashes of War, I think it's at this stage in the guide, once we have the 60 Vigor, once we have all the stats for the spells and such, it's at this stage in the guide where it's very much dealer's choice. This item here is important to collect. That's Elden Stars. It's one of the incantations required for the Legendary Incantations trophy. So make sure to pick that up if you are trophy hunting. 
But yeah, as I was saying, it really is dealer's choice at this point. If you enjoy using Flaming Strike, use Flaming Strike. If you enjoy Lion's Claw, use Lion's Claw. You know, it, you can pretty much solve any problem the game throws at you with the tools that you have available to you now because we've completed such a significant amount of the game at this stage that we have access to a large majority of the best stuff. Yeah, so. this is true. And as you have two, uh, two great stars, you can have like a main uh ash of war go to and then you can have a kind of backup one probably the best backup one would be um prayerful strike probably but again it's very much default's choice whatever one you want to go with you could just have wild strikes as the backup so you never need to change to fight npcs it's literally just do it do what you want at this stage um we just stick with the the good old ass slam but we then do change eventually into lion's claw uh, and that's our kind of go-to one. But yeah, again, dealer's choice at this stage because we are pretty much at such a prime level. Um, and the main thing is just maintaining up to level 140, which is what we recommend you stop at um, for leveling up in, in this game specifically. Uh, obviously, the other Souls games, you don't get to anywhere close to that level. I so, mean, there is so nothing stopping you going above that, though. Oh clear. yeah, I mean, sure. Yeah, you can go higher than uh, than that if you want to, but level 140 is enough that... So we're just ignoring these ants, by the way. Um, they're just a pain in the ass. We're just grab it, grabbing the items, um, even if the ants are a bit annoying, whilst grabbing the items. And so that was three, three items on the bodies and a ghost club or four. Even if the ants are a pain in the ass, uh, still... Just ignore them. And then head to the grace, because the grace is right here, and then that'll uh, despawn their aggro, I guess. Yeah, you were saying about leveling there. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, you can level up higher than 140 if you want. Uh, taking off the uh, Claw Talisman. Because basically, if we put on the the, uh, the Claw Talisman because it allows you to just, like, much easier kill the ants with a jump in, a t with a jump in L1. It's just enough to put your attack over the edge with where our stats are. But um, that by putting it back to the, the Gold Scarab, we had to change our helmet again. It's a bit annoying, but yeah but otherwise yeah you can level up higher than 140 140 is just uh it's it sets your passive defenses at like a, a nice level i wouldn't say go less than 140 particularly for you know snowfield and stuff like that but it also means if you do want to pvp it doesn't put you out the range of invasions so there is that very true um you'll notice um or you possibly notice that killing that um, damaged gargoyle gave us a disproportionately large amount of runes relative to the other things in this area and this isn't a bad spot to farm runes if you need them because up in the uh, sort of ruined structures above us there are I think four of them and you can from the grace at the very top of this area kill all four of them without ever being in any danger so it's not a bad spot to farm runes so we got the map fragment, we went to the uh, the Grace, and now there's like a bunch of items like scattered about in this kind of like weird debris. So there's a human bone shard, there's a smith and stone four, there's clarifying bolluses, there is golden rune nine, there's a golden rune eight, there is a glove wart, so it's a ghost glove wart five, and then there's another golden rune eight, and then there's a nascent butterfly, and then there's a fucking smith and stone four. So there's all of that. Hopefully you were paying attention. There will be a test. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, now... Uh, so we grabbed all that shit. We're just going to ignore that guy in the horse. Fuck him. So that's a mausoleum night. Uh, now there is a wandering mausoleum close by. And obviously if we... Um, if we uh, get that wandering mausoleum to sit down, it'll despawn all the mausoleum nights. But yeah, just being careful as we're coming up this main branch, because this is where the gargoyles are, and they will pepper you a fire breath, and it's quite devastating if it catches you with it while you're on the branch. So we're just head, we're just zooming straight up to the top, just um, avoiding all the attacks from the gargoyles. So you need, you need to go up further than we did, because clearly what ends up happening is it breaks Torrent's poise, essentially, and then it means that you get knocked off Torrent, and then it scatters you with even more splash damage. So you have to be right up at the top, like, touching this branch. Carefully you don't fall off, though. 
because the camera is bad here. But once that's finished its fire breath, you can then uh, start avoiding its attacks. Yeah, there's a couple more items to grab um, on these structures. Um, or actually, maybe not on this one. No, I don't think it's this one where there is one. I think it's further over. There is a there is a couple. Uh, like so, this this one leads to the grace, which we're going to grab, and then that means we can just warp back to it later when we have to. But there is a couple. There is a couple items up here. Yeah, I thought I, I didn't think I was going nuts. I'm so pretty sure drop, oh. Prince of Death staffs up here. Once you um, drop down onto the grace, that then gives you access to the other gargoyle, which I was able to just kill in one jump with an attack. Okay, cool. Probably so because it two. didn't know you were there. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that'll be why. So we got those two, and now we're going to jump off onto this uh, like sort of upper platform area with another waterfall. And then right up the back is either it's either a smith and stone or a glove wart or okay it's a glove wart. So there's a ghost glove wart seven, which is fine, I guess. Just ignore I mean, all if, these ants. If you need one, you now know where one is. Yeah. So dropping down this hole, there's actually a rune bear at the bottom. And uh, I think this is where we finally demonstrate the the technique for fighting rune bears. I think it's either this one or the next one. Yeah, uh, if memory serves, it is this one where we figure it out because we can just get the drop on it here. Cool. So what we do is we craft. At least I think this is what we do. Yes. Okay. Okay. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we do... No, I don't think this is the, the technique. Basically, actually, so I should, I should mention it now. You want an iron jar aromatic, which gives you a huge amount of poise, which means you can't be, like, knocked out of attacks. But granted, Wild Strikes plus Blood Flame Blade is a good option, but if we had the iron jar aromatic, it would mean that that attack didn't flatten us. Yeah, unfortunately, hitting the room bear staggers it out of its um, sleeping animation. Yeah, but as you can see, Wild as... Strikes is just tearing this thing a new asshole. Wild Strikes is amazing versus the room bears. And for that, it drops the Prince of Death's cyst. So yeah, the I would say that version of the postule. If you don't have the Iron Jar aromatic, then it's still doable with Wild Strikes plus Blood Flame Blade. But if you have the Iron Jar aromatic, it means that you don't get knocked away by any of its attacks. So thus, you can just keep swinging and it dies very, very easily. Um, so we've whipped out the uh, the Beast Repellent Torch because that was like 15 Basilisks just there for the sake of a Rune Arc and a Smith and Stone 6 and is very hard to avoid those Death Clouds. But if you have the Beast Repellent Torch out, they just, I don't know, they just stop working or something. So grabbing a ghost glove wart five, and now we're entering this little chapel. You want to zoom straight to the end because there is a fucking broken gargoyle. Uh, so if you just go straight to the end, it means you avoid the stupid fire attack. And your reward for killing this thing is vacuum slice, which used to be really bad, is now perfectly okay. You smack a sword into the ground, it produces a big shockwave, basically what the gargoyles do to you whenever they fight you. Um, it's okay. It's serviceable. I'd rather be using Stormblade, let's put it that way. Perfectly cromulent Ash of War. So there is a Scarab here, and that Scarab drops a Somber Six, which, I mean, fuck's sake, you've, somber you've fucking Somber Six is falling out your arsehole at this point, but fuck it, we'll take it. So heading back to this Grace here, which is the one at the, the little hill, uh, that's, I was basically cleared out that entire area, there's not a whole lot. There is a couple of other items that we will get just before we head to the boss, but otherwise, we are, um, yeah, just heading down here. Yeah, uh, the I first think... thing we're going to do is make the mausoleum sit down. Grab this glove yes. wart along the way, because it's the only item in this little area we're in now. But if you ride the spirit spring up, immediately ride down these branches towards the wandering mausoleum at the end there, you will be getting peppered with, like, great bow shots and stuff. Just zigzag. Um serpentine your way up here 
and they should all miss, jump past it onto the mausoleum, break the skulls, and then all the mausoleum knights go night-night. They just fuck off, and you don't have to deal with them anymore. Yeah, so it's highly, highly suggested you come here first and do this. Uh, ignore, like, all the item drops, whatever. We're going to start from the beginning again. Uh, but just this is, uh, you know, what, let's start from the beginning, but this time with no fucking mausoleum knights. But if you do want to kill the mausoleum knights, they do drop some stuff. So they drop the mausoleum knight armor, the mausoleum knight gauntlets and the greaves. They can drop the knight's greatsword, the partisan, the great bow, the eclipse crest great shield. So that's like the uh, the, the knight variant. And then there's the soldier variants, which can drop the Lord Sworn straight sword, the brass shield, the Lord Sworn shield, the mausoleum set, which is the surcoats, the gauntlets, the greaves. They can drop smithing stones, the war pick, heavy crossbow. So just like any other uh, soldier class enemy, except they don't have helmets <laughs> because they don't have heads for some reason. I mean, yeah, it does that's... make sense. As silly as it is, it does actually have some consistency to it. <laughs> Okay, very quickly, why? Before this next pair. If they don't have a fucking head, they're not wearing a helmet. What are you getting the helmet to drop from? Like, if they don't have a head, how the fuck are they walking about? It, it, it's, it's my fantasy. Ghost I want them to fucking... Bro. I want that... Right, oh, okay, okay. Ghosts I'm limiting your heads. fantasy. <laughs> this just in. Ghosts can't wear helmets, but they can hold a shield. Yeah, I don't make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're um, firing into this thing with uh, Wild Strikes. As you can see, being under its belly, is if you don't have the Iron Jar aromatics, is the way to go. But that wasn't even enough fucking Wild Striking to break its poise, if you can believe. Uh, accidentally recast Blood Flame Blade. But yeah, Wild Strikes is the way to go, as you can see. But you have to be right in at its cock in order to uh, not get hit by its attacks. And that's it for that little bit there. Kind of, it's kind of nothing in that cave. The somber seven again. You have plenty of somber sevens. And if you don't, it's not long before you will have access to plenty of somber sevens. So missing one's not gonna break the smithing stone bank, so to speak. Yeah, getting a so getting a pretty cool item at the end of here. Actually, we'll be picking up the mausoleum soldiers' ashes from uh, a little broken tree just after grabbing the item in this structure. Um, and the Mausoleum Soldier's Ashes are actually really good. So you know how Lutel can teleport? Yes. There's five of them and they can all do it. Shit, there's five of them? Wow, that is pretty yeah. good. It's like the boys light. Instead of being tanky because they have great shields, they're tanky because occasionally they just teleport away from attacks. Cool, cool. Very cool. Still not the boys, but it's, it's like similar to the boys. Nothing is. Nothing Nothing's is. the boys. Even the mimic's not the boys. Nah, because the mimic's cool, but like the boys are like cool, but in, like it's almost like you're trolling the game. <laughs> the best spirit ash. The cooler spirit ash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I picked up a golden rune, and obviously we've, uh, so there's a glove wart there as well, but we've got the beast repellent torch out because there's a whole bunch of basilisks down here, and again, we would rather not deal with them, so we're going to put, uh, we're going to equip the off button, and uh, there's a scarab <laughs> up here. I don't know why I've got the fucking torch on my right hand instead of the left hand, but whatever. So you could still have it equipped while you were on torrent. Ah, is that why? There we go. Well, you can two-hand the off-hand weapon on torrent. The same as you can with, like, when you just stood up. But if you just have it in your main hand, in the right hand, it is easier to just switch to it immediately when you need it. So this is now on the second branch, and we're now on the left sub-branch of, of the right main branch, I guess. So we're going to grab the great runate, sorry, the golden runate rather, and now we can just head back to the start of the right sub branch, as which I would call that. And then before doing that, we can drop down, grab this somber smith and stone seven. So if you needed one, you didn't need to fight the bear for it. But uh, yeah, right up back to the branches. So it's, it's probably, I mean, it should be pretty self explanatory, but I feel like I have to give an overly complicated 
commentary of it. So now we're back on the start of the right sub-branch, but we're now on the right portion of the right sub-branch. I guess. So you're giving people an overly complicated description of what's going on. Is this so that people are forced to watch the video instead of just listen to it? Oh, that's a good idea. So we're now on the right sub-sub-branch of the <laughs> right main branch. Oh, now we're back. Right. We're off the right sub branch of the right main branch. We're now, <laughs> we're now still. We're now on the the right sub branch still of the right main branch. And right at the end of that, there's a golden grenade. Yeah, for those members of the audience who are vision impaired, <laughs> this is the worst audio descriptive setting you've ever. It's actually heard. not that bad. I'm telling you right now, it's not even that bad. So we can use one of the branches to jump onto the top of this kind of sunken tomb i guess and there is an item on one of these uh, i think maybe the other one there's a stone sword key as i kind of drop down so we can just drop down straight to the bottom because there's nothing on the roof of these things or of this one specifically there is another one so now we're just going to head to the other one and then i think that's it for this area then it's just the boss which is uh laughably easy well the first of a few bosses but yes it is laughably easy Okay, crap. Yeah, okay, it's the first of three, I guess. Honestly, if you're struggling with this next boss coming up at this stage in the game, I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> it's well, not you, gonna be hard. You won't be struggling because you've got our delicious guide to help you. So we're gonna use the spirit spring to uh, boing our way straight to the roof. And then we can get. Oh, so the stones are keys on this roof. I swear there's another item on a drop off here. Did I just see it? Nope. There is, but it's on the uh, structure on the upper level of oh, Deep Root, not, not right, the you're level right. we're on now. So we can jump off the roof again, on uh, using the Spirit Spring to take no damage, and now it's straight to the boss. And normally, you know, we'd go back to the Grace or whatever to heal up, but we've got 11 flasks, we're doing alright for ourselves. And um, it's a, it's just it's just a Crucible now. You know why so, we've got 11 flasks, don't you? Uh, because we made the mausoleum sit down. Is that why? We'd have had a lot less if we were being peppered by mausoleum knights. Oh, sure. Right, that's, that's a good way of putting it, yeah. So, we've got Prayerful Strike, which means this Crucible Knight is just over for this Crucible Knight. The official strategy for Crucible Knights, now that we are at this point in the guide, is to just spam Prayerful Strike. We better end this man's whole career. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh. <laughs> I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, your reward for that is Silurius Tree. So that was actually a named Crucible Knight, one of the two in the game, I think, Ordovis and Siluria. I don't know why they weren't the duo, but... Whatever. You're getting the Crucible Tree armor. We already have have the Crucible Axe armor, but Silurius Tree allows you to do the big holy damage tornado projectile that those guys can fire at you, and it is fucking devastating. It is such an incredibly hard-hitting Ash of War, and I highly recommend checking that weapon out if you are doing anything resembling a Strength Faith build. It is very, very good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So now we're on the main branch that leads up to the Grace, and there is just a couple of items that we're gonna grab on this sort of pathway. So then the branch, um, there's an item, and then there's a uh, Smith and Stone 5, and that like, kind of sunken bit of ruin, I guess. So now we need to jump off, start again, and then there's another uh, higher up item to get. Yeah, just doing a few loops here, because, I mean, grabbing these items, there's no real elegant way to get them all in a single run without coming back up the way we just did. So, inconvenient, but got to do what you've got to do. So, we're just going to kill that guy, because, uh, fuck him. Bunch of extra then... runes, why not? And there's the Prince of Death staff on, uh, on the top of that rune. Stats-wise, it is the singular strongest staff in the game when you're in New Game Plus and you no longer care about what level you are. At 140, it's outclassed by almost everything else because it also scales with faith as well as intelligence. 
So once you're at 8080, it's the best casting tool in the entire game. Until that point, it's dog water. So we dropped off the edge of that rune, we got an arteria leaf, and then there was another item. And then we can just warp straight back to uh to across the across the roots grace. And we're pretty much we've just got the same setup. We're just using wild strikes. And uh so we do need to change our setup halfway through here, uh, because there's two bosses one after another. Um there is Fia's champions, because this is this whole part of the game is part of Fia's quest. So Fia's quest is tied to Rani's quest, I suppose. Uh, or at least a little bit. So, yeah, Fia's Champions is just several NPCs, which, because we have Wild Strikes, is literally no issue at all. It can actually be a little bit tough without the Wild Strikes. A bit. But with Wild Strikes, it's less than nothing. Yeah, we don't only have Wild Strikes. We have Wild Strikes and a Mimic with Wild Strikes. So it's yeah. doubly free. Like, so, as you can see, like, come on. <laughs> it doesn't get any easier than that, really. So I guess thinking about it now, actually, if you just give the the bubble shield aromatic, if you just have that in your inventory, that just turns the mimic tier into Trisha at home as well. Yeah, pretty much. You can turn the mimic tier into most ashes at home. You could just give him a great shield and then he's singular the boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I guess. So this guy uh, equipped uh, fucking casted Endure, which meant that he... I mean, obviously, by doing that, he sealed his own fate to the Wild Strikes, but... Um, God, we do a lot of damage to these guys. Well, this guy done a lot of damage to us. He's fucking... Like, Havel's armor plus the... The fucking gold dagger from Dark Souls 1. <laughs> the Havel with the Tracer. You get free yeah. for eating that boss. Um, it's garbage in PvE because it literally does nothing. Um, it creates a cloud of death blow. It's bad in PvP because if it was good, it'd be overpowered. Um, just don't use it. It's a waste of a spell slot. But here we are talking to Fear. We tell her, no, I'm here to be hugged. Um, because we're sad and we missed the waifu who disappeared when we started taking our meds again. Um... So you this get whole the bit is sped up. blessing, radiant Baldican's blessing, and to skip the animation of having to stand up after being hugged, just walk back to the grace. It is considerably faster. Yeah. So you just exhaust a dialogue, warp back, and then I do the same thing again, and then do the same thing again. Uh, well, in terms of like the warping back, because now we have to do the boss, and as a result, we have to change our setup to this. Uh, Bafflingly, this was the best fucking thing we could find, and it is using um, uh, what was it? Was it using? It's like that roar, Asha War, um, Beast's Roar, Beast's Roar. Uh, so we've got we're gonna do the um, the turret setup. So we're using the Royal Remains armor set. We've got the bolt Drake Talisman to boost our lightning damage negation. We've got the uh, Icon Shield on, so that way the Mimic tier can get a little bit of health regen. We're also using the Roar Medallion and the Highland Axe, which will boost the damage of our Roar Ash of War. And if anybody else, again, has their own method for beating uh, Fortis Axe, then by all means, uh, tell us. But this was the best method that we could find because it's super, super easy and reliably consistent. I can actually mention a couple of other things that work well against him. Um... Just invest in what souls we have there into leveling up. But Fortisax is kind of unique among the dragon fights especially because he really does not move that much, which means he's very susceptible to ranged attacks. So for any kind of caster, just hit the face is my advice. Um, if you have a great bow, the Radan's Rain or Raid of Arrows, Ashes of Wars, are very, very strong against him. As you can see, we're using Beast's Roar because when the projectile hits the face, it does a huge chunk of damage for something that we're not invested in. Beast's Roar scales with dex. We have not invested in dex beyond, what, 16? And for 16-point yeah. investment, that is doing a beefy amount of damage. You have the Mimic Especially... hitting it with Rot from a range as well. Yes, so we've also set up the Rot turret thing with the Mimic as well. Uh, just, you know... 
by that we have got the um, the Dragon Communion Seal on our right hand, the Icon Shield on our left, and then when we summon the Mimic, as long as we have Rot Breath as the only castable spell, it will only cast Rot Breath against Fortisax. Now, so we've got the Mimic doing that because it's, you know, it just fires out a big cone of damage at Fortisax, so that's pretty cool. And uh, Fortisax, I think, it is rotted, so that's a great way of getting in just free damage against a boss like this. This allows you plenty of time to run away, heal up, cast anything you need to cast. But because we're spamming Beast's Roar, it means that we can stay the fuck away from Fortisax. And it also means that we can, um... Oh god, we are so close to getting Death Blighted there. Holy shit. Yeah, so stay <laughs> away from those clouds. Jesus Christ. If it makes you feel any better, you could equip the Prince of Death Cyst that we picked up in this area. It would give you a ton more Death Light resistance. So it would totally save did. you from situations like that. Um, other Ashes of War that would work great. Thunderbolt would be fine. It's weaker against Vortisex because he resists lightning, but it would be okay. Um, Stormblade would be an excellent choice. Um, Ice Spear would be an excellent choice. You really do have options against him, and solely because he does not move all that much. Yeah. He's not too um, hard to contend with. So the whole point in that was just doing ranged attacks to the face. So this is, again, we just wanted to get more footage and talk about this because... It is very interesting what we're doing because it's so, so different from what we're doing uh, in the rest of the, the guide. So I think we're just using Spectral Lance here. And I, from my memory, this didn't work particularly well. So this might just be showing you that the Spectral Lance method is actually bad against Fortisax. The reason it doesn't work all that well is because, uh, one, the Lance isn't upgraded. Which, obviously, would be better if it were. Uh, two, it's blood infused, so its physical damage is lower. And three, the ancient dragon type enemies have uh, more stance than uh, the wyvern type enemies. So things like Fortisax will resist stance breaking far more than uh, the likes of the enemies similar to Argeel. Now, um, Fortisax, I think it is kind of unique in that sense because he has the functionally highest poise of any enemy in the game and yet Spectral Lance still breaks it. It just takes a long time to get it to work. When it does, holy fuck that damage. But it does take a long time as opposed to Beast's Raw which was just dealing consistent chip damage at range. You could indeed um, potentially just spam uh, Black Flame Tornado under this thing, but compared to the other dragons of this type, Fortisax just has so many, like, death clouds and bits of lightning coming down that it's way harder to actually do because it just seems to do a whole bunch of, like, passive damage when you're close to him, which is why our usual techniques don't work too well because he just has just damage just everywhere randomly. So that's why we think that just going with the rot turret method plus some kind of ranged attack is definitely the best method for fighting Fortisax, and that was Beast's Roar plus the, the abilities to buff it. But again, if you've got any if you've got any ways of doing it yourself, then by all means put it in the comments. But what we've done there is we uh, we went to Fia's body and then we warped back and uh, we got the, the rune off Fia. But when we warp back, Dee's brother will show up and he's fucking murked Fia for murking his brother. And then we warp back again. This is so unintuitive, like who the fuck would ever do this? We get, we get back the twin set plus the inseparable sword. And then when we warp back... Oh, okay, we warp back to the round table hold. I was thinking to myself, there's no way we fucking do that again, surely. But now no, we're back at the round table hold. I do just want to say that the rune we just picked up from Fia is not a great rune. It is an ending. It is the um, great rune of the Duskborn or something like that. Curse Mark of the Duskborn or something along those lines. It unlocks Fear's ending, basically, and that's the same as Melina's ending, the Dung Eater's ending, and Gold Mask's ending. They all get you the same achievement, so honestly, dealer's choice. Pitch, pick whichever one you want. Gold Mask. Um, <laughs> and the yeah, Inseparable that's... Sword's okay as well. It has built-in Sacred Blade. So that is it for part 34, but just quickly, I do what I mentioned while you're on that topic. Yes, there is only technically three categories of endings that matter. You can pick Rani's ending, that'll get you an achievement. You can pick 
the madness ending, and then of the four other endings, they're all in the same category, so picking any one of those four will get you the achievement, which is why we don't do Dung Eater's ending, because it is functionally pointless. But that's it for Deep Root Depths. And okay, there we go, that's Deep Root Depths done. Join us in part 35, where we're going to be doing Dragon Barrel, finally. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.